Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 78 of the Whatnots Review Show, uh, where each week we have a d different story to talk about. Could be a comic book, could be a movie, an anime, manga, something else. We, re we read it, watch it, do what we have to do. Come back here and talk about it. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined, as always, by Melissa Wilkinson. How are you, Melissa? Me. Hey. I'm good, Kyle. I had a good shopping day yesterday. Ooh, what'd you buy me? <laughs> I don't know. Do you want a new lipstick? Because that's what I bought myself. <laughs> well, might not be I love my shopping. shade, but... <laughs> <laughs> I love shopping. I like to physically get dressed up, get in my car, drive out, be among the people. Mm -hmm. I had some great deals. I found exactly what I needed. It's cheaper than I thought I was going to get it. That's always a and good And I'm on the road yesterday. I'm on a stoplight. And I look, and in the lane next to me is a limo. And I'm very excited. So I wave at the limo. And the driver waves back. And I see him roll down his window, and I roll down mine. And he says, hi, where are you going today? And I told him, <laughs> I'm going to Bed Bath & Beyond. And he said, that's a great place to shop. And I said, where are you going? And he says, I'm done for the day. <laughs> there you go. That's a great <laughs> feeling like, to have. A handful of seconds long, but it was a truly magical interaction. <laughs> like, amazing. if I would have bought things online, I wouldn't have had this. That's amazing. I got my hair cut yesterday. I noticed. Uh, but it wasn't the typical thing that I do. Uh, my roommate is my bum barber. Uh -huh. I, I go to him, but he asked if I could be his, like, test model. He had a training <laughs> class. And so oh, sure. I, I got a haircut for free, uh, which which was super n n n n nice. But I wrote on Twitter, it was like, <laughs> they think I'm a model. <laughs> I fooled them. <laughs> 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 so that was good. It was fun. I had a good day. But we are not here to talk about shopping or haircuts or stuff like that. We are here to talk about American Vampire Vol Volumes 1 and 2. Uh, and this is, I guess, the second e episode in our horror month thing g going on all yeah. October long. Last week we covered Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, so that was, that was a fun one. I mm. had never seen that film, but it was good. Uh, and your, your favorite spooky monster is vampires, or I guess are vamp yes. vampires. Yes. Uh, and so you ended up picking American Vampire for this week of the, mm -hmm. the pitches that I proposed. Uh, what, what drew you to this one besides the uh, uh, obvious, hey, I like vampires? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it'd be interesting to cover a similar topic two weeks in a row because a vampire is something. The mythology is mm -hmm. so rich, you can really like mix and match it any way you want. They can have any combination of powers. You know, maybe they're allergic to sunlight. Maybe mm -hmm. they're not. Maybe they turn into a bat. Maybe they don't. <laughs> so I wanted to do a direct one week after the other. Let's see how different people do vampires. And you told okay. me it was set in the Old West. Like, that's interesting. I was intrigued by this tombstone sort of vampire story. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I've, I've heard of this comic plenty of plenty of times. Um, it is... One I, I think a lot of people recommend of like, hey, it, w w w whether you're just getting into comics or if you are specifically looking for horror comics, this is one that you should absolutely check out. Uh, but it had kind of been in my blind spot. I just never really picked it up. It had never mm -hmm. been on the top of my priority list. Um, but I'm glad we got to check it out. I, I ended up really liking yeah. this. I I think, yeah, I, 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 I ended up really liking it. I think my mm -hmm. biggest critique uh, is just that I, I don't know if it completely found its footing just yet in, in those first two yeah. volumes. Um, but I like where it's going. I, I like the whole premise. I like the whole idea behind it i i think it'll uh end up being a fantastic series as i'm sure many of you out there already know 
Yeah. What did you think? I really dug the mythological aspects of this book. Okay. I like what it took. I like what it did with the vampire, like bloodlines and the power structure and what they can do and what they can't do and what they're weak to. Mm -hmm. Mythologically, I dug this a lot. Really nice take on the monster. Tone wise, it was a little gruesome for me. Not in that it's like, oh, too much blood, too monstrous. Just like, I don't know, like everything's too dark. Everything's uh, too grim. Interesting. And I think that might be part of. That's kind of the product of the time it was written in. This first volume is from 2010, which is just after the reign of Twilight and Vampire Diaries and things like that. And you read Stephen These King's forward and it's vampires. like, vampires aren't heartthrobs. Vampires aren't cute boys next door. They're monsters. And I think it goes almost too hard into, oh, none of these are good people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they are stone cold killers. I I believe is what he had s- said mm-hmm, in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for, for those of you guys out there who might be wondering, this is a comic book series written by Scott Snyder with art by Raphael Albuquerque, uh, and then it is kind of co created in part by Stephen King. He ends up uh, writing the origin story for like the the main bad g- g- guy. Of the series Skinner mm-hmm. Sweet. Uh, but I think beyond that, I, do, I don't know if he really plays a, p- a part. Yeah, uh, and I think. Comic here. I think the forward says that Scott Snyder had plotted out the origin story and like yeah. he, it was just given to Stephen King to script out. Yeah, yeah. That is a good thing to note. But I, I think just having Stephen King's name attached to the the yeah. book i think helps it out a, t- a ton in recommending it to people like oh mm-hmm. that guy that wrote all those books that that we all know you <laughs> like you've seen it you you've went you went and watched uh i, I was gonna say the uh, what, what's the one that what that i'm thinking of uh the cat's eye i think it's a series of uh like short anthologies that Whatever. There's a ton of I think of that's Stephen the book King he wrote. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. Um but but yeah, I, I think if like in terms of recommending stuff, if, if I'm like, oh Scott Snyder, though a, a lot of people who don't know comics are gonna be like, Who? I don't I don't know who Scott Snyder is. <laughs> uh but they'll they'll know who Stephen King is. Uh and then mm-hmm. you can be like, Oh, but then also Scott Snyder had a fantastic a fantastic run on Batman. He does some fantastic work. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I'm 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 I I I think this is one I think you can easily recommend to people. Uh I wasn't expecting yeah. this to be as much of a crime book. As it, Me it was, either. I, 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 I was expecting this to have a little bit more horror, like a tint to it and lean more on that and be like a horror western. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, it's, it's a horror comic that ends up being more of a western crime comic. Just And the yes. characters are mainly vampires and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so... I, I liked it in that sense because, you know me, I'm big on the crime books and stuff like that. But I uh, mm-hmm. was expecting a little bit more horror stuff. But we might get there eventually yeah. because this was only the first two volumes. Uh, so let's, let's do a little bit of a synopsis. Uh, and then we'll do housekeeping mm-hmm. and get into spoilers and stuff like that. Uh, so this, as we mentioned, starts out in the American West. Uh, and I guess to start off the book, I guess we kind of have to mention Skinner Sweet first and foremost. Yeah. He, uh, they, it, it sounds like they were robbing this train. There was a big train accident within this mm-hmm. fight that happened. Uh, this guy got killed. In the midst of that, he, I guess, ingested some blood of a vampire and ended up uh, becoming a vampire mm-hmm. himself. However, 
he is the first in the in a new breed of vampire. Uh, they yeah. make note that um, that as, like yeah, as time goes on, these vampires will start to change. They're a little bit different. The ones over here are maybe a little bit different from the ones over there and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that was neat. Yes. Uh, fast forward a little bit. And we now uh, see a character named Pearl, uh, and she is a young and aspiring actress, uh, and she is about to be introduced to some supposedly important men who can help further her career, uh, and it ends up Mm -hmm. going very, very wrong when she finds out that all of those men are also vampires, and they want to turn her into a vampire as well. Uh, and I, I, I don't remember it did, did Skinner do something to her as well to make her be one of these American vampires? I don't remember off yes. the top, top of my head yes. how that he, worked out. I don't remember exactly how, but yeah, she ingests some of his blood too. Cause this is the 1920s LA now and he's just hanging around, you know, he's an immortal vampire from the old West times through to the roaring twenties. He's just around, he's lurking around yeah. and he encounters her and he turns her into a vampire. So now she is the second in this line of these new american vampires that have no weakness to the sun and they're extra powerful and extra monstrous like their jaws unhinged and they got a million more teeth yeah scary stuff uh so all of that happens but as it does then we start to see kind of the politics come in there's the older vampires from europe and they don't really like the 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 skinner suit Mm -hmm. guy and this new breed of vampires starting to cause them pr- problems and stuff like that. And then uh, there's th- there's other people after them, vampire h- h- hunters and stuff like that. So it's this big mix of like vampire faction versus vampire faction as well as vampire hunters in the mix. And it's, it's mm-hmm. pretty fascinating. Um, yeah, jumps around in time. The first volume is the Old West in the 1920s, and the third volume is pretty much all set the same year. It's all in like 1930s Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. So they are all throughout big, American history, a big dam out there. Um, so I'm I'm ex- excited to see where this book goes. I think it has a lot mm-hmm. of fascinating e- e- elements. Yeah, to it. Uh, but a little bit of housekeeping for you guys before we get into spoilers and such. Uh, I mentioned last week we covered Bram Stoker's Dracula uh, for our Oct- October-filled horror month or horror-filled October month. <laughs> Whatever. Filled uh, with the start of October. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so we will be here all month of October doing horror stuff. Um, but you guys can find this podcast as well as our other podcasts uh, like The Captain's Log and The Reactor Core uh, on the whatnots.com or wherever you get your podcasts. All you have to do. All you have to do is search The Whatnots, and we will be there. Uh, if you like what we do, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is where you can mm-hmm. support. You can get episodes early. Uh, you can get exclusive e- e- episodes uh, and many more. We also want to give a big shout out to our Patreon supporters at the $5 tier. So thank you to Sam and to Christine for helping us out, uh, mm-hmm. keeping the mics on. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate and love you both. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all for housekeeping, so let's get into spoilers. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Spoiler territory. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I kind of want to go, I, I, why do I, I want to talk with this? I kind of want to talk about Pearl. I, okay. I, I yeah. think she was a good character. Um, she, yeah, she was the second of this new breed of American vampire, but she's, she's Mm kind of caught up in all of this. She, she did. It's, it it seems like she doesn't really want to be a part of it, uh, but ends up kind of being dragged Mm -hmm. in by Skinner Sweet. She kind of escapes, but it sounds like things are kind of, uh, 
just she now has her own problems and politics that she has to deal with so it, it seems like we have these mm-hmm. these two plots right we have pearl's yeah. story and we have skinner's sto- story excuse me and they kind of go their own separate ways for a bit there yeah but i liked pearl's story the most i think yeah i i did like her as a character i like that she doesn't spend too much time angsting over being a vampire now i think because Mm -hmm. it's such a massive turn for her and it is a turn where she's been betrayed by a lot of people she's got enough of this burning vengeance in her and yeah. bloodlust in her both literal and metaphorical that that kind of powers her through this initial like psychological transformation then she's like oh oh i'm very powerful like she knows she is the new most powerful vampire in america being the newest you know yeah. Yeah. the premise of this book is not just vampires being different based on like the culture and nation they're from, which I think is interesting. Like these original vampires are all European vampires. And this is the first vampire in America. So like there's, as you travel to different areas. Yeah. I really like the premise that it's like, well, of course not every vampire, every part of the world would be the same. That's kind of silly. They have different weaknesses and things. So she is the newest of these vampires. Also it's partially cultural differences and partially like evolution. The newest one is the most powerful one. So that kind of gets her through this transformation. Then she's like, well, I still want to go live a quiet life. Henry, come on. We're buying a house. (laughs) I like that she's really set on getting what she wants. And she does get it. She gets her quiet little cute cabin in the California woods. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But then, like, she she really has this kind of it's more of the protective nature than like an offensive vampire like i'm out to hunt yeah humans and kill and stuff like that it's more just like she she is using her powers to protect what she has and what she loves and uh i i I like that but at the same time she's not totally good at the like like she's yeah like the like pristine hero of this story she's not the like main Mm. protagonist that always does good after all she is a vampire which has this like evil about it and she mentions that she's like i can feel it inside me like there is this evil inside Mm -hmm. me that is just waiting for the right moment Mm -hmm. Um, which is I, i i think in terms of horror like that that is I think one of the most horrific things about this book or or or, or just about vampires yeah. in general like um like I I I guess I never really thought about people trying to stave off the infection so to speak right mm-hmm. um I I put that in air yeah air quotes but like yeah, this idea of, like, th- th- they're trying to fight it off like a c- c- cold or, hey, I can feel this thing inside <laughs> me and I'm yeah, I'm just not acting on the things that it's telling me to do. But it's waiting for the right time and there's go- go- there will be a, t- a time when I, like, I can't do a thing and it's just I'm going to be full vampire and it's going to be horrific. Um. And so I think that like impending, mm-hmm. impending doom is just like, uh oh, something's something's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something bad is about to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, and she she takes her vengeance missions very seriously. She really takes those people down in a very gruesome way. But then she is kind of committed to. I'm going to try and live this quiet, peaceful life. Presumably she's just out there biting livestock to live. But yeah, when it comes back again, she is all the way on. Like if she needs to do any vampire action, it is deep, serious, violent vampire action. Yeah. Yeah. And she, she, I think she also comments of just like, I forgot how much I like this. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I, I wonder if her story is going to end up being a more tragic story. Um, mm-hmm. Where, yeah, she does have the quiet life. She does have the guy that she really likes. But as we know from this book, she also has her former best f- 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 friend. Yeah. Who's now also a vampire, uh, like hunting her down to get revenge. Because uh, I, I guess her best friend idolized her, uh, and then mm-hmm. figured out that she was uh, that she became a vampire. So she became a vampire herself by like cutting herself and using some of the b- blood that was left behind. I think to like yeah put that in 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 her, um, and yeah, the, the I, I I she was. They had a fight at at the start, and I think that was kind of where the the beef started. But it 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 ends up spiraling into the, this this whole thing of yeah, she's like hunting her down, and the book does a really nice fake out where you like the like she finds the house that they live in and you're just like oh no this is not gonna be good and meanwhile pearl (laughs) and henry are on their way home and uh yeah like they're they're just like oh we can't just we can't wait to get home and relax and heal and like just not have to worry about a thing uh and then the book does this nice fake out that Oh, it happens to be that these two story lines are kind of taking p- place in two different times. Uh, Pearl's yeah. st- story that you had seen was maybe like two months ago, and and mm-hmm. then the the stuff from I forget her name, but the 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 best friend. That's the stuff that's happening Hattie. now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she 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 gets to her house and there's old people living there and it's the yeah. wrong couple and she's I like boo i gone i slept so long yeah <laughs> and she she scares these old people and she's like oh my god i'm so sorry i i was looking for someone else <laughs> but uh yeah i i, I liked that cuz it, it it really builds up this tension uh, of just like, oh no, mm. it's about to go down right now, and then just like, oh no, not right now, you know. <laughs> we'll take a step back. So, what did? Yeah, you- I I oh, like okay. that twist a lot. I no, I I think Pearl is the character that is the best off out of all these stories in any of these time periods. Mm-hmm. Pearl, when we leave her at the end of volume two, is doing the best. And I really hope she does get to hold on to that. She'll fight for it tooth and nail, of course. It won't be easy. But I don't want her to lose that because the rest of this whole story is so tragic. Like, Pearl and Henry are the one bright spot to hold on to. Every other sweet thing gets corrupted. Like, I initially really liked the relationship and the friendship between Hattie and Pearl until you found out that... Hattie has betrayed her and sold her into, you know, this ring of vampire businessmen. Yeah. And every other couple in the story, every other relationship, like somebody dies, something terrible happens. And it is kind of, I can see where the story is going. I imagine the same would happen to Pearl, but it's like, can we get one? Can we get one win, please? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I don't imagine henry would last very long uh, mm-hmm. or i i like i i don't want to see him become a vampire and like they mm. they make it a p- point too of like hey don't turn me into one you can feed off of me all you all you want and all you you need but don't actually turn me into one unless we actually need it and mm-hmm. Like I, I, I don't want to see that happen. You're right. Like I'm, I'm rooting for Pearl to kind of keep this like small crumb of a happy l- 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 life, right? Just like, just yeah, get away from all these politics and all the these factions that are hunting each 
other da -da 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 down um which i i guess in the first two volumes we don't really understand all of it we just know that these older vampires don't like the newer vampires and that's kind mm -hmm. of what we have to take it at mm -hmm. so, we'll see. i i do like the tension of the way vampirism is passed along in these stories mm -hmm. because it's not the vampire bites you and it's not the vampire bites you and you get some of the vampire's blood too it seems like it is only you get the vampire's blood in you, which can be so accidental. Like, yeah. I think that's what happens to Jim Book, isn't it? Like, yeah, I forget exactly. if it's Skin or Sweet or which vampire it is, but he gets blood just dripped on him and it goes into like his eye. I think he just needs to get into your body somehow. And that's enough to taint him for the rest of his life. Yeah. Like, the threat that it's not a choice you make to infect somebody it could be an absolute accident or what happened with hattie where she stabbed pearl and then she kept the bloody knife and like used it to stab herself later and get the blood into her body that way there were so many people that could just become vampires without you knowing to without you knowing of it or meaning to make them vampires yeah exactly especially since we kind of know that medical world back then was not the greatest or the most yeah. hy hygienic uh and stuff like that so that would be fascinating one thing they haven't covered in terms of like passing on the vampire mm -hmm. virus or whatever it is um is because uh there's the character of abelina book and it yes. doesn't say she's a vampire but it also has no, it's addressed. Felicia. Wasn't her name Abilene? Isn't it her something? daughter Felicia? I Abilene is the um. Wrong. Let me see if. Uh... So Abilene is the one who slept with Book because he's like, "I need you to kill me. I am a vampire now. I cannot fight this off. I need you to kill me." The there's a new moon tonight. It was a moonless night. This is when I'm at my weakest, and she's like, "Okay." I'll do this for you, but I need something from you first. I love you, and I want some of you to hold on to sleep with me first. Uh, I, I've, I've been charting my fertility periods. It's now. I could probably get a baby out of this. Yes, so that's right. Felicia. It is, and we Felicia. don't know yet. Oh, what vampiristic uh, abilities or attributes does she have from her dad being a vampire? Yeah, that th that's kind of what i was getting at like is she half vampire is she full vampire mm -hmm. because her father was and that blood is now in her um is mm -hmm. her mom I, I i guess her mom died but um no no abba abilene is so still confused. alive we see her in That's volume right. three it was abilene's mom who died there is also a series of dead wives running throughout these two volumes. <laughs> like, um, a book's fiance dies. Uh, Abilina's mom dies in childbirth. And then there's, right. uh, um, the, the sheriff in the third volume, his dad, his adopted dad's wife died years before he was adopted. And then dead his own wife dies. Club. Like, just, don't get married. You'll you'll perish. <laughs> yeah. It's, which That's isn't funny. to say that there aren't like very forward active female characters in the story. It's just like we have these series of set dressing wives that some of the male heroes have. Like, you know, and he's got a wife back home. He has to get home to. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Whoops. Just, there just she kidding. goes. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a weird thing that I I guess I didn't really think of when reading that. But yeah, they don't do the, the, this whole thing of like, hey, are is there such thing as half vampires or yeah, is it we're not there yet. Passed on through childbirth, we don't know. So I'm I'm wondering if that will somehow come up later on in the, in the book because there's this whole uh, the vassals of the morning star. Um, and mm -hmm. those are the vampire hunters um which i i guess what what is 
a vassal. What is the definition of a vassal? Oh, oh God. Oh. Vassal. It's one of those words that when I read it, I'm like, sure. Yes. Vassal. I get it, but if you as you were asking me now to actually tell you specifically what it means, I don't know. I ain't it's got it. A holder of land by feudal tenure <laughs> on conditions of homage and allegiance. A vassal, a person or country in a subordinate position to another. So the vassals of the Morning Star would just be the servants of the devil. Which, I, who I, knows? I feel like that's already what vampires are. Am well, I wrong maybe in it's saying they that? are of the morning star in that. Maybe they are of the morning star in that that is their entire focus. Like, they're not worried about anything that is not vampiric or demonic. You know, they're not going to raise money to rebuild a school that burned down or anything like that. Well, they sure. have no other purpose. Well, <laughs> they have sure, one thing. Like, they're not out there to stop just like a regular human murderer or anything like right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah, not yeah. like a general just organization that developed vampires. It's like we have one mission. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I like I agree with that. But like, I I. I, I Yes, considering last week we watched Dracula, and there's this whole idea yeah. of he when he got this c c curse on on him, it was because he rejected God, right? And he was like, "I c yeah. c curse you," and this and that, and he stabs the big old statue, and it just starts mm -hmm. gushing. B blood and it gets in his mouth and he's like the blood is the life blah 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 um and it is this very demonic thing it is this very satanic thing they they don't mention it by like oh yeah he's now like yeah serving satan but like that that that's <laughs> kind of the picture it paints and so i'm i'm confused now as to where they get this name the vassals of the morning star because the morning star is the devil in biblical mm -hmm. text and so if they are like servants of the devil i feel like that would put them on i mean hey maybe it's a war for like oh i'm assistant to the regional manager or i i am <laughs> the assistant re regional manager right and they're, they're both like fighting for that 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 top spot it's andy versus white <laughs> right <laughs> it might be something like that hey if we kill all the vampires we'll be no the number We're two next in line yeah right um who knows i could be completely <laughs> wrong with that but i i i thought that was uh an interesting name yeah i want to learn a lot more about this vampire mythology. Like, we are seeing the new vampires here in America. They must be making new vampires in, like, Germany. What are those ones doing? Because like I said earlier, Japan. Seems like the vampirism and, like, what your weaknesses are and your abilities and your powers, it morphs a little bit based on uh, just age and evolution and also, like, where you're from, you know, what your lineage is. Yes. So what is a, is a new vampire in America necessarily stronger than a new vampire out of China or yeah. somewhere like Who that? Who knows? We've got a whole world of vampires we have to get to. We've just seen like such a little fraction of it. What did you think of the, I, I think Stephen King brings it up in the foreword to the book. Uh, where he mentions this whole idea of a a new breed of vampire being the American vampire and the parallels that has to just this idea of the American dream. Like they want new opportunities and power and and stuff like that, mm -hmm. right? And we have these these rich, wealthy industrialists who are, you know, trying to the american west and stuff like that and here are these vampires that are doing a similar thing of like wanting to 
gain power and keep the power they have. And here is these these newfangled Americans stirring things up and causing problems for the Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Skinner yeah, is... He's not trying to tame anything. He wants everything as wild as it can be. And he's not like... I don't know if he's necessarily yeah, trying to that's... climb a ladder, but he like wants power wherever it is that he goes. He wants stake of land, of business, of comfort somewhere. Like I don't yeah. think he wants to be like, I want to knock out all of those European vampires and be king of the faction of the world. He's just like, I don't want anyone to bother me. I want to cause trouble however I want, and I want a bunch of candy. And I'll fight whoever gets in my way to get those. Yeah, I I I, I did, didn't mean the word tame or the to like t tame the West, but like to as take like, control of. Yeah, yeah, more of like, hey, I want to be the one in charge. I want to be the the top dog, the one with the most power, the one with the most influence, and stuff like that. And I I I feel like that's kind of what he's going for. Of of. Not in a sense like, hey, I want to impose some type of order on things, mm -hmm. but hey, you can't fuck with me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the most powerful <laughs> yes. one here. So I think that's it, because he doesn't really have any competitiveness necessarily. He just wants things in his immediate circle to be done his way. Mm -hmm. And just like he never gets into anybody else's territory, but if somebody comes into his territory, that's when he goes to town on him. Yeah. So th I think that which brings... I think makes him go ahead. No, I think that makes him like even a more interesting antagonist because it's not like he doesn't have that one set mission of gain power, fight these people. Like it's just kind of whatever he wants to do. At, so at he's least, kind of unpredictable. Like the only constant so is just being seedy and eating candy canes. Yeah, I because I I think we're I I think he is starting to get that sense of purpose though, right? Because in the second mm -hmm. volume, he's now I I think the first first volume was more in like Hollywood ish area, right? I think. I don't remember exactly. I'm assuming that because of Oh, the first of the volume movies. is it's in Colorado, uh in the old story and the new story yeah is in Los Angeles. Okay. So yeah, so Los Angeles and then we see Skinner out in Las Vegas. So he is mm -hmm. eventually moving to a new location and in this location he's He's basically partnered with uh, another vampire out there. I don't know. I don't remember if they mentioned that he was the one that turned uh, the cop's dad into the vampire, or he had no. He said he had been a vampire. No, 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 for no. The dad was time. like an old Gaelic vampire. Yeah. Um. But so he partners with him to kind of take out these industrialists that are building this giant dam but that that wasn't really skinner's territory right right like that like so he he is yeah. starting to go after people and and stuff like mm -hmm. that and i i i don't know if we necessarily know the entire reasoning behind it yet mm -hmm. um, or or what it will eventually turn into yeah but I think and... he's starting to find his purpose of just like, ah, here's my mission. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to take these guys out. And for a book that's very much about lineage and family and what your past is, like we have a lot of uh, monologues from various characters, like little bits of narration from them reflecting on something mm -hmm. that happened in we're following like a family line you know like the the book family line we don't know anything about skinner's past we don't know anything about him from like the day he robbed that train or whatever nothing back beyond that so who knows like did he have family once is there somebody out there he wants to get you know find a connection to 
Is there anybody he misses? Anybody who misses him? Yeah. Maybe because we don't know. It's going to be like, oh, I secretly had someone helping me this entire time. My sister. <laughs> <Ha>. <laughs> who knows? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. What do I want to talk about next? Let's talk about the artwork. Some. What did you think about the artwork? I like the artwork. Yeah, I, I, I think it was, for the most when part, I, initially... I really liked it as well. When I initially picked it up, because the first story you're reading is Pearl's story, mm -hmm. I was like, this looks good, but this doesn't look how I would imagine a horror comic to read. And then the art style shifts a little bit as you get into the Old West story. And I'm like, okay, this is like a little shadowier, a little rougher. This looks more like what I would expect out of a horror comic. Yeah. And then as I kept reading, I don't know, like... I think the comic's very effective at what it's doing. And there are like panels where like somebody is sneaking up behind somebody else or like, um, Oh, like Skinner sneaks up on somebody. Like I think he sneaks up on Pearl, like towards the end of the first volume. And he just sort of like comes in through the curtains and like He's all the, the fabric is yeah. billowing around him through the open window, like really neat looking panels. I don't know. Like, something weird about it where I'm like, this is surely very scary for those characters. Uh, I don't feel anything. Like, am yeah. I scared? Am I supposed to be scared? Yeah. I, 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 I definitely didn't feel like this was a particular, particularly scary book. Um, mm -hmm. But there are horrific things inside it. Right, like there, I, I think you mentioned at the start, like there is some gruesome stuff that happens here, uh, and I think one, I, as I mentioned, one of the scariest things is just this impending, like, hey, P Pearl is trying to hold this back; she is holding mm -hmm. on as long as she can, and we know something is going to happen, and it, like, all he hell is just gonna break loose and it's like that mm. idea is is just scary but yeah because it ends yeah. up being this western story because it ends up being yeah. a crime story it is it's just swap out gangsters for vampires and it's it's the exact same thing um yeah like you're right i think it is like a a crime story be it like more like a a contemporary it is it is a crime story be it like a western or like the contemporary to the time like the mobster story or whatever like shady business dealings and things like that like it's always that story i never feel like this is a horror story it's like this is a crime story with just like a horror setting to it like a a that's the themes it's using. That's the obstacles it has. Yeah. I don't know if this has any of the traditional plot work of a horror story, except for the fact that there are vampires in it. Yeah. Or at least so far. But mm. I, I, I think to, to me, the artwork got its most, it, it leaned more into the horror uh, when it was, it, I, I think in the second volume. Um, when yeah. When we do see Hattie locked up, right, and and she's there, that is more horror based stuff. I feel mm. like yeah, it a, yeah. It, it was a second artist. Let me see if I can find his name here. Their name was it Mateus Santaluco? Is that who I'm thinking of? I I, I thought don't you'd know, know it. Is let me pull it up on Comicsology. Uh, volume two, yeah, Matteo Santaluco. But to kind of elaborate on what I was saying about the horror themes, I don't know if there's anybody who is vulnerable enough for long enough for me to really feel like this is so much of a horror tale. Like it's either somebody who is immediately killed, or like somebody like Pearl, like a very strong protagonist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't I, know. I I think 
for me, it got it leaned more into horror, like I said, when we see Hattie locked up uh, in, in, in yeah. I guess, the basement of that gas station whatever i think that yeah. the, 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 those moments and mateus santa luke I, I just forgot his name and i just looked it up too uh it was mateus San, santa luco i think his his artwork especially leaned into that mm-hmm. but also when it goes i think more into the crime side of it Crime also mm-hmm. has a background in no in noir, in very dark settings, mm-hmm. in very low light or just one big spotlight. Yeah, right? and I think that that type of lighting works really well in a vampire story because they mm-hmm. hide in the shadows, they step out of the shadows and stuff like that. And so I I I, I think that's where it lent itself itself most to the horrific stuff um and then i I, oh i i have to say so i was finishing up volume two uh yesterday when i was eating lunch i went out to go get panda express so i'm sitting there i'm nice i'm reading it on my phone uh and i'm in panda express and it gets to the fight scene uh, the 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 big fight scene at the cave uh, where everyone is th- th- there. Skin yeah. is so sweet is there. The older vampires are th- 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 there. Uh, the detective is th- there with the two a- a- agents. Uh, there's this big fight, um, and oh god, what song was it? It it was it was some song. It but it was just like man, if this was a movie. This would be the perfect song to play during this fight scene because it's <laughs> it's happy and it's upbeat and it's just like it's a, the complete opposite of what's happening. But the song is talking about like sunshine and and and, and stuff like that. It's like you're my sunshine, do 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 do. You're my... like it, it, it's it, it, I I don't know if that was the exact song, but it's like right. It, it's the irony of like there's this upbeat happy song while this horrific thing is happening and it's vampires so they can't go out in the sun and the song is about like <laughs> sunshine and all of this stuff and like happy stuff and it's just truly like, this is... somebody stole their sunshine yeah i was like this is great i love this <laughs> 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 so that was fantastic fantastic but but yeah i think once it leans more into the action bits like that it also mm-hmm. becomes kind of less horror in in my mind because it is these i i like i'm i'm a huge fan of i don't like seeing the monster i don't like seeing the horrific thing because i don't have to imagine mm-hmm. anything it's all right there but if you leave to like i don't know exactly what's happening what does this monster or what does this vampire actually look like or what is he like actually doing then I, my imagination starts to run right and i like it's it's this idea of i'm i'm scared of the unknown and if you show mm-hmm. me it's not scary right if if i see a vampire <laughs> fighting a vampire higher or something like that it's not scary it's just a fight scene um so i i I, I think that might be one of my critiques as well we see we see a lot of the horrific things where i i kind of like the the moments where henry walks in on the bootlegger and they're draining the guy of the blood and we see it for like a panel and that's it Mm -hmm. it's like ooh. That like I don't know what's go, 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 go going on there, but that was sca- like I I don't want to know what is happening there. <laughs> like let's go somewhere else. <laughs> I I think how blatant they are with all the vampires works because that is the premise of the story. Like there's a new type of American vampire, so it fully displays Skinner and Pearl for you, and they are very different than vampires I've seen. Like. They get these long talonous hands where like their mm-hmm. fingers become these spikes that are like a foot long. And like Pearl's 
jaw unhinges, like shoots out, and she looks like I don't know. I think. <laughs> Like, do you remember in Beetlejuice where the ghost couple's trying to scare, like, Catherine O'Hara away and Gina Davis, like, pulls her jaw open? That's what she looks like. Did, 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 you, did you look at the, 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 the sketches in the back of, of, of the book? Yeah, they, I they, glanced through them. I didn't look at them too close. They detail what happens with the jaw. Oh, yeah. And the, like, it's like the lip... But she has a new chin jaw, coming out of her mouth yeah, like like sticks out and it's just like oh that is bleh. yeah 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 and i Gross. liked because this is so very different i like that they're like we're, we're being coy about it you you will have to guess about the full appearance of the vampire it's just like nah here's something you've never seen before here yeah. in bright beautiful big light this big crazy sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah, and their long, gangly limbs, like, they are, oh, they're very, I think it's, like, right on that line between, you know, like, you know, the Buffy vampires, where they just sort of get, like, that big brow on them, and they're kind of sneering at you, there's mm -hmm. that, which is, there's, like, a light physical transformation, and then there's, like, you know, Drag last week, where he's turning into some sort of almost wolfish creature, and this is right down the middle, where it's like, that is still a humanoid form, distorted as it could possibly be, while still being categorized right. as a humanoid form. Yeah. Like, yeah, like, there, there is something... I also like... Go ahead. No, I also like the small detail where the vampires, instead of looking in the mirror and they don't have a reflection, they look in the mirror and they have this distorted funhouse reflection. Yeah. I've I, never seen anybody else do that. I was wondering if that was dependent on how far along their tr transformation was. That's huh. kind of what it seemed like because I think there was another scene. I don't remember if it was Hattie or Pearl, but they look in the mirror and it shatters like in what we just watched l last week um, huh. where Dracula kind of shatters the mirror right before uh Keanu Reeves's character looks in and sees that he's not there behind him, even though he knows oh, yeah. he's there, right? So I, I'm, I'm wondering at. Like, I thought as... I don't think the mirror. Sh I thought I, the mirror I, shattered because Dracula just like with whatever psychokinetic powers he may have, like made it shatter. Like, whoops! All you can see is cracks. You can't see the fact that I'm yeah. not in there at all. What yeah. a crazy mirror! I, I have that thing replaced. Yeah, that 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 is what he 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 did. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering for this book if it like that it that is a thing that happened. Like they not only have a reflection, but if they. Like it will shatter a mirror, and mm. de depending on like how long, like how far along the infection is, it goes from this like your normal re re reflection to okay, you're starting to turn into a vampire. So it's this distorted funhouse mirror looking thing, and then when you are full vampire, it's like <laughs> shatters. Who knows? I certainly don't. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had something else that I was gonna say, and I don't remember it now. Uh, so the foreword, Stephen with... King is talking. I want to talk about this angle on the story. In the foreword, Stephen King is talking about how vampires aren't supposed to be heartthrobs. They're not supposed to be romantic. They're not supposed to be dreamy. Mm -hmm. They're not supposed to be someone who will protect you and watch over you. Like they are bloodthirsty monsters and you are a fool if you believe otherwise, which I take as a personal attack against myself, Mr. King, because <laughs> boy, howdy, that's my favorite thing. We were talking <laughs> last week about how I love these vampire romance novels that have no horror whatsoever. The plots are like, I'm an editor at this publishing firm and our number one novelist is this mysterious reclusive man who writes best-selling vampire romance novels, but he's such a pain to work with. He never comes to the publishing house. Man, I'm just really going to go sucks. visit him. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, it's just like, oh, you're really a vampire. You've been writing true stories the whole time. Well, I'm still your literary editor. I'm going to drag you to this literary conference because we need you to promote this new book. So, like, the vampirism means nothing. There right. is no horror to it. It's just, like, <laughs> romantic fluff you would find in any other paperback novel, just, like, with the threat of, hmm, uh, he needs to bite somebody to feed. Well, I'm right here. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you need the food, what else am I going to do? Here is my vulnerable, sensual neck for you. <laughs> like, it's, it means nothing. There is no, not a single ounce of monsterism in there, which is honestly the way I like it. I like, there are the two sides of vampires. You've got this, and then you've got, like, Count Chocula and, like, soft romantic vampires on the other end, and that's where I like to live. <laughs> I like Count Chocula. He's a good vampire. <laughs> <laughs> he is! He's the most friendly one! But and it's not just the violence and the bloodthirst that are thrown into this sh- story. I think setting it back in historical times, I like seeing the same character persist through all these different decades and all these different periods of mm-hmm. the American expansion. You know, the Old West, Hollywood land, initial you know, just putting up the neon lights, Las Vegas, like that part's neat. But the older, the farther back you get in American history, like the seedier everything is. Like you look at that old West town, like every, like there's so much like racism and misogyny around that is also like in Skinner's suite. And I think that that's the point of it. I think that's what they're trying to do. Like, yeah, no, he's an ancient, terrible monster. You're not supposed to have any sympathy for him. And I'm like, what am I doing reading all these books about a character I'm not supposed to have any sympathy for? What's the point in this? Yeah, I I, I think somehow there is. It's just kind of unpleasant. Oh, now I remember what I was going to say, Ah. and it kind of piggybacks off of this, too. Uh, The whole idea of horror and, like, fear of the unknown and stuff like that. You were like, hey, I think it works to have Skinner's suite just be out there, be out in in the sun, and here's this horrific thing for everyone to see. And yeah, I I think on one hand, that does work. I think at the same time, like, I'm... I I I'm I'm not necessarily scared of the old fashioned vampire because I know what it is already, and so I feel like mm. if if I was maybe told the story more from their perspective, and here is this like changing of times thing happening. We are dying out because, hey, here's this new vampire that is stronger, faster. It can be out in the sun. Uh, But there's only a few of us here in America. Like, we just have the ambassador, right? Like, they had the Russian vampire and the French vampire and the the, the stuff like that. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, I'm, I'm wondering if they could somehow do it like that where there is this big bad new monster that we get to see from time to time but it's not oh that's mm-hmm. just skinner sweet he likes candy <laughs> right right like he um like i just, just some way to see the horrific trail of 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 bodies that he's leaving behind and not get to see as much of of him but we do get okay, to see so you want him to be moments. known more by like repute yeah more you want more him to be known reputation. more by like reputation and legend and not know that he's this like you know the handsome blonde man with a candy cane yeah he's he's the guy wheeling and dealing at at the b- 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 brothel he likes candy he's making business deals left and right that's just good old skinner sweet no i like i i I mean, yeah, it is like on on one hand, the the c- crime fan in me is like, but I also like that. I like seeing the bad guy front and center and just being like, I mm. know he's bad. I know he is a terrible person. Yeah, I know he is a monster, and we can't get him yet. And like, yes. so it, it's just like I, I feel very mixed in that. Like, they're the, both good threats. Yeah, like they they can both work in their own right, and I I I 
yes, since I was expecting this to be a bit more of a horror comic and not a crime mm-hmm. comic, I wasn't expecting this, and it kind of th- th- threw me for a loop. So. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Yeah, it, it just sort of put a... To finalize what I was saying earlier, like, I do like the soft romantic vampire, but I do also like horror. I can take a lot of gore and monstrous things like that i'm okay it's not my favorite variant of this but i can sure take it but like the fact that there's so much social monstrosity also going on i'm like show me all the blood and guts you want but please stop insulting the mexican sheriff of this town like that stuff i'm like oh great oh i have to deal with this now yeah (laughs) just more blood splatter please that is more appeasing to me than any of this is yeah (laughs) more blood and guts please yeah sweet i don't i don't know let me see if wikipedia says how many uh blah 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 number of issues 34 11 on oh wow second cycle also 12 issues in miniseries one shots and anthologies um i think we read what the first 10 issues is that right i think about that and the end of volume two has a preview of the next volume which is in world war ii and i think i also saw an ad for a volume after that that gets into like the 1960s okay yeah so there's i wonder 34 issues in the main series and then um starting in 2014 there was like a second series called second cycle American Vampire Second mm. Cycle, and that went on for 11. Uh, and then, yeah, it, like, like they said, there was just a number of one-shots and side stories and stuff like that. So we we actually ended up reading a good chunk of this, mo- 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 mm. more than I thought. We almost read the first third. So it in, no. in, in terms of that, then, if if... We, for, I I guess, lack of better terms or a better way to handle it, if this is the first act of the, of a sto, sto, Mm. sto, 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 story, how, like, does that change the way you think about it? Or I I think like it's missing something? This comes up a little bit. This comes up a little bit where the, the vassals come to Pearl and essentially they say you are a monster like you are an abomination against god even if we realize you are trying to live this quiet little life here we still don't like you but we are willing to permit you to live as you will because you are the only person that can tell us what skinner sweet's weaknesses like there's only the two of them right now in this class of vampire it's just skinner and pearl right. and each of them knows how to kill the other one And I like that they got that on each other. Like, neither of them seems like, like, Skinner oddly doesn't, like, he's not trying to create a coven or anything like that. He's not trying to create a clan. He doesn't want Pearl to follow him, to be his. Like, he was just sort of like, huh, wouldn't it be funny if I tried to make another vampire? There you go. You're a vampire like me now. Yep. Have fun. Like, he just <laughs> does it and, like, <laughs> takes off. Yeah. And she also doesn't nece- – like, she hates him, but she isn't necessarily like, I am out to kill my maker. Like, they're just sort of – She ends up I don't care him. what you do. I'm going to go live my own life. Yeah. But it, I, I feel like deep down it's more to protect her because she knows once they kill him, well, then they're just going to come after me. Mm. Uh, which I guess they also don't know about Hattie. Left. Is is she? She she must be one yeah. of the new American vampires too, especially if she used Hattie's blood. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So she is the third in this line, but like, I don't think the larger vampire know world her. knows she was created. Like, she's still kind of a secret over there. Okay. But yeah, like, there's a certain group of vampires that like, like Hattie. What's Pearl, Pearl, I assume, would want to kill Hattie for her own safety. 
But like, I don't know how he feels about Skinner. Skinner and Pearl don't really care about killing each other, but they all have, I know how the rest of you can be taken down. And that threat, I think, is really interesting. I don't actively want to kill you, but I know exactly how. And someday somebody's going to come to me and ask. Yeah. Or it, I, I guess we also don't know if, uh, if they truly do know. Right, because it, it, it like yeah, there was the whole thing about Hattie being locked up in the basement, and they are testing all of these. Like, hey, all vampires have some kind of naturalistic weakness to some naturally mm-hmm. occ- occ- occurring element, and the guy that was holding her captive is just one by one okay here's oxygen here's this here's that here's that you know here's it, it, oxygen okay, well, okay you you know what could i you mean ima- could you imagine if you were a vampire and your weakness is not like silver or pine or something it's like oh uh, it's just boron <laughs> it's just like a, a loose element right i mean something hey like really mundane that yeah just like um oh, it's table salt right um <laughs> pepper weirdly enough can't right? pepper but it, it well pepper's not an uh, element but but <laughs> but the, the, so my 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 point is there is some naturally occurring yep. a, 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 a element that he was testing just one by one is it this is it that and he never reached it he he never found out what it was so yeah. Hattie might have from from what we're told Skinner Sweet has been around the longest so by experience he might no 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 but then there's yeah and Hattie who is the the one that we've seen come into c- c- contact with the most things so by an educated guess she might know the best but then there's pearl and mm-hmm. we don't we don't know necessarily what all of her experience has been she might know but she might not know she well didn't she tell no i think she told like she told abelina and didn't abelina tell felicia and that's how felicia knows i'm gonna melt down my locket and use that to make the bullets But that I think was, Pearl that knows was, what her weakness is, and right, it was a golden bullet. Yeah, Pearl knows her weakness, whether that's through like an experience or if that's like some sort of instinctual thing. You know, Henry, once though? you are turned, wasn't it Henry who who went to mm-hmm. them the next day and was like, "Hey, I know she's oh. not going to tell you, but I fear for my wife's Maybe. safety." So I'll give you the information as long as you stay away from us. I I believe he that might have been it. Yeah. That. So I is it gold though, or is that just a do it's have has there been, at least has has there been precedent for vampire stories in the past of like hey they don't like gold? No, I think it's always either. Cold iron, silver, maybe garlic, wood. I think somebody mentions Whoa. pine, and that struck a chord with me as being familiar. Like I think I have read somewhere they mention a lot of wood stuff. That's yeah, how like Hattie pine is among it. the stronger things to defeat a vampire with, for some reason. And I'm, I'm wondering if it's also a similar thing because they got the gold for from. Uh, her locket, right? Uh, mm-hmm. And this is me speculating, but again, we watched Dracula last week here on the show. They make mention of like, hey, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, like a Christian symbol, right? It it just needs yeah. to be something that you really believe in. So I'm wondering yes. if this locket is like, it's the bond of like, hey, this is someone I l- l- love, or I believe in uh, books m- m- mission here, and I'm going to make a bullet out of this locket in which I kept his picture. So maybe it was something like that. 
I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone out there is like, no, you idiots. You obviously haven't read the whole thing. (laughs) To which I say, well, duh. (laughs) There we go. This is one of my favorite parts of any kind of supernatural mythology is the working of like what materials give you weakness and give you power and what you can use with things and like the different elements in which something can destroy you and just like, you know, all different woods do different things, different metals do different things, different Mm -hmm. stones, different elements. This works for me in any time of, in any kind of supernatural or fantasy story. (laughs) It's one of my faves. yeah. Yeah. I thought it was fascinating. Fascinating stuff. Um, mm-hmm. anything else to say about the book or the story, the artwork, something else you might want to talk about? I think it's a, we missed. it's a pretty finely constructed book. It ain't for everybody. Yeah, I, it I, is like I was saying, a real intense take on the vampire. So if you are like me and you're more aligned to like the more handsome, brooding, love interest sort of vampire this might not be for you (laughs) um i i do want to say please check out more of scott snyder's work he has a fantastic run on batman he also has another horror book called witches and that absolutely is Mm. a horror book i have read the first volume of that in the past and it is scary pledged is pledged You'll know what that means if you read the book. Um, but yeah, I, I this was his first creator owned thing. Mm-hmm. This was his first time making a like major comic uh, that was not published by Marvel or D- 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 DC. Um, and so I, I don't know how far along into his career this is. It is, but I mentioned at the top at the top of this. I don't know if the book necessarily found like completely found its footing mm-hmm. by the end of these first two mm-hmm. volumes. I think it's on its way there, um, like ab- ab- absolutely yeah. on its on its way there. Uh, I I don't want to say this is a freshman effort because i again i don't know how far along in his career this is Mm -hmm. but considering i've read more recent uh scott snyder work and i i i love his 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 work i feel like i could see him working out some stuff if that makes sense working out some ideas mm-hmm. or how do i structure these stories or how do i do stuff like that so take that as as you will uh but that is all i have to say on this book yeah melissa yes are you going to continue this vampire trend that we kind of started by accident <laughs> Or are, do, do you have uh, other horror stuff? I have other spooky pitches. These do not have vampires in okay. them. I'm going to take a little break from that. I, 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 I was like, what if there's going to be an unspoken, like, this is just vampire month. <laughs> Welcome to vampire month. Welcome to vamptober. <laughs> now, I have three movies. One okay. is a classic horror movie. One is kind of a spooky mystery themed comedy. And the third one is a uh, a spooky young adult adventure for Halloween for the kids and for families of all ages. There you go. So pitch number one, this is a movie I watched last night. So I thought, why not throw it into the pitches? And my homework's already done for the week. The Shining. Okay. The Shining. Stanley Kubrick's classic The Shining from, I think, 1980. Again, based on a Stephen King work very loosely. I know he's not a fan of this adaptation. Family moves into a hotel, massive hotel, deep in the mountains in Colorado to be the winter caretakers. They're there all alone for five months over the winter in this building filled with haunted memories Mm -hmm. that end up infecting the family or maybe there was darkness already in there to begin with before they even got to the hotel a movie with a lot very 
very craftfully done, full of little details, full of conspiracy theories around the movie about what different things mean and how different things are put together. Interesting. Yeah. That's pitch number one. Pitch number two is a favorite of mine. This is the movie Clue. Oh. Based on the hit one. board game. <laughs> yes. So this is a fantastic comedy about six people with color-coded code names that get called to a mansion for mysterious reasons and the host dies and the butler's like, one of you must have did it. Why were all of you called here? And it's just a a big madcap whodunit. It's got Tim yeah. Curry, the classic, Madeline Kahn, who will remember from watching uh, Young Frankenstein last year, Michael McKean, always a treat. Martin Mull, so many people. And there's multiple Jane Weedlin from the from the Go Go's. Right? Isn't yes. There multiple yes. Endings. Because the board game Clue can have any kind of result to it based on the randomization of the cards. They released this in theaters. This did not do well in theaters. This yeah. only this became like a cult hit on the home video market. You would go to the theater and get any one of three different endings. So you'd watch it and go talk to your friends about it and they might have seen something completely different. But I have the DVD that That's has you can neat, watch though. it with a randomized ending or you can watch them all string together. Yeah. That's Kind of fascinating, though, that different theaters show different endings, right? And you can be like, what ending did you get? Oh, my God, that's not the one I got. What happened? Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's our first gotcha pond movie. First right? and only. There's truly nothing like this. And it is Loot a real a treat movie. for this Halloween season. Yeah, it's, it's a mm -hmm. good one. Fun fact, uh, there's a comic book adaption. I, I, I don't know if it's uh, an adaption of the movie or if it's just like, hey, we're going to take the same premise and just make it into a comic book. But yeah, uh, I, I heard decent things. It, it's one of those things like if you really love that film mm. and you're not looking for like a real serious mystery novel and you know, <laughs> maybe not the best writing, but just like, hey, if you're looking for something fun and cheesy and just like yeah like there 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 is a good adaption of that out there in comic book form Ooh, interesting i've so never heard three. of this pitch number three is a return pitch from last year you turned this down and i thought kyle kyle what a mistake so here it comes back this is the movie Paranorman. Oh. This is a stop motion animated film from, from Studio Leica, who made Coraline and Kubo and the Two Strings. This was their sophomore feature, I believe. And this is the story about a young boy who has the ability to talk to ghosts. And he lives in this little New England town that had like a witch hunt in it mm -hmm. centuries ago. And he angers the spirits and the whole town like something makes a life and so the whole town is overrun by these like <laughs> pilgrim zombies and he's the only person that can try and talk to the spirits calm them down and you know save his town from being overrun it's a really fun just like good goofy halloween movie very it's i like it a lot it's very well done like it's a real fun <laughs> adventure and like it's got a very good emotional, heartwarming side to it, too. This is a movie I almost never hear anybody talking about, but I think it's a real strong one. Okay. Pitch number one yeah. was The Shining. Yes. Pitch number two was Clue. Pitch number three, Paranorman. I think those are some good, mm. good picks. Let me see. What one do I yeah, want to Yeah, quite a variety. Do? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I, I, I think in, in, for the sake of variety, I'm going to go with Paranorman because we had nice. the like spooky, actually k k kind of scary Dracula. Then we had this c c comic, which is a horror comic, but maybe more of a crime or Western show. It just has a spooky monster mm -hmm. put in there. Uh, but now we can do something for the whole family. Paranorman. 
Yes. I say we watch that. Yeah, like, that's a good fun. choice. Yeah. Here in the middle of the month, let's go for a, a family fun, a, a friendly feature for all ages. It truly is. There you go. It's good spooks for the whole family. Uh, let's mm-hmm. see. I think that about wraps us up. Melissa, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And I just did a, uh, did a guest spot on another podcast. There's a James Bond podcast called Spectre. I was just on there talking about Moonraker, which is the most delightful, cheesy cornball of a movie. <laughs> so for almost three hours, you can hear me and the host nice. cap everything Moonraker. Nice. That sounds like a lot of fun. I am at Yo Kyle Springer uh, on Twitter and Instagram. I don't remember if I put the social media things up before, so if if I did, they're up there a second time. I'm at Yo Kyle Springer. We are at uh, the Whatnots on Twitter, uh, and I believe that is all. We will get out of here. We will be watching Paranorman next week on episode 79 this yeah. has been episode 78 of the whatnots review show we will see you next week bye bye oh, party people i don't need this cord up anymore there we go okay I just had a brain fart and completely forgot what I was about to say and how to start the show. So <laughs> I was just we like, do show now. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to show. <laughs> <laughs>